Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Dave. This is Joshua. And this is Brandon. And you're now tuned in to PBD Horror. And you're now tuned in to PBD Horror. Hey, what's up? This is Angel from That Strange Show, and you're checking in with PBD Horror. 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 <laughs> Dude, we had you do it. I realized, Josh, we had you do it two weeks in a row. And listening to you say hara <laughs> made me laugh both times. Hora. I feel like the fact that Josh doesn't say it with an R makes me have to say it harder, like a hard R every time I do it now. Horror. Hard R. Horror. 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 So now we're going to get into some horror news. Stereo Box announced its partnership with horror icon legend John Carpenter for audio and podcast projects. He also stated he's working on a few other things and could return to the director's chair. What do you guys think about that? Uh, I'm a big fan of cereal and cereal boxes. <laughs> so that's cool. <laughs> I don't need cereal. I'm fat enough trying to lose not weight. It's cereal. It's like, it's, it's <laughs> that's like me cereal. And Josh's, that's me and Josh's it's like cereal, cereal killer. <laughs> like the cereal, how it's spelled with an S. Oh, oh, cereal. Uh, oh. Not, not. I'm so, I'm so confused. I'm like, why is he teaming up with like Tony the Tiger for a podcast? What's going on? I mean, I, I will admit that I collected Frankenberry and Booberry cereal boxes. So I was kind of excited about this news. And now I'm less excited about this news. But uh, I guess it's pretty cool. <laughs> Frankenberry was awesome, dude. Yeah, Frankenberry is a shit. Booberry is good, man. I didn't get the Frankenberry? chocolate. No, Frank- it's like, I, just, I, I like count chocolate the best. Do you? I'm not eating chocolate for cereal i don't know it's not my thing Dude, i never buy i never buy that cereal and so i had purchased all three boxes this year this past year this halloween and yeah. i think that the frankenberry and the booberry went stale <laughs> oh yeah uh, it took me forever to finish it yeah what i wish See, I, i'm like I a wish fat I guy I, I buy a box of cereal it doesn't even last until i get home i wonder how oh, fast john carpenter eats his cereal <laughs> that's what we were talking about yay john carpenter Woo. you know what get back I, hope, to that? I hope he's entertaining i mean that seriously there's a so i listen to a bunch of wrestling podcasts and say there's some yeah. wrestlers that are lame as the day is long and i can't listen to them and then there's other guys like that are just so entertaining man they they just spit out whatever they feel like saying like jim Cornette. you ever listen to him man he he's an old school wrestling fan and he just rips apart everything Dude, that's new. Anything that sucks, on, he just. Dude, what why do we go to wrestling and about, cereal? Because <laughs> I hope John Carpenter is the same, man. John, John Carpenter, Carpenter how did like, that go to wrestling? Hard, yeah, you ever heard of Jim Barnett? <laughs> <laughs> Some of the wrestling guys. You ever heard of Jake the Snake Roberts? <laughs> 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 I don't know, Josh. All right, so we got we'll nothing on that. All that out, huh? I'm just going to move on, Josh, to something that you may like. So Godzilla vs. Kong is set for a release date on March 31st, and that's going to go on HBO Max, and it's also going to go to theaters. So I want to know, who do you guys think is going to win in that film? Godzilla. Godzilla? Hell yeah. Kong. Kong? Kong's going to win. I heard Diddy yeah, Kong's going to make an I, appearance. I, I, I got to be honest, it doesn't look that good. Um, no, no. I'm a huge King Kong fan and I'm a huge Godzilla fan. And, uh, I watched the trailer and I was very disappointed. It sounds like the score is not good. It sounds like they just, well, it looks like they just put it together to make it. And, uh, I'm not entirely sure that it's going to be good. Kong has a giant ax in the city in the trailer I saw. And I was like, what? Awesome. Like what, where, where's he getting an ax in the city? Like he just, it just happens to be a giant axe laying around like a tree with a rock in it. Like the hell man. I don't know. It's got some pretty good actors in it, but I, I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent. And there's a little girl that controls Kong. Like, Oh, Kong's my friend. Where did that happen? Like skull Island. He was a beast. He had no friends. And now he's like this little girl he's attached to. So I don't know. I was, like I was going to have to watch the movie to find out all these, the answers to these questions. He's like, How yeah, you I'm this girl, but he gave Samuel Jackson the business in that movie. <laughs> right what the hell man but that's funny what's her name marvel girl was there to me josh because you're saying that this doesn't look good but coming from the guy that watches fucking killer pinatas fucking <laughs> killer thumbs and what else what else some what film the thumb guy that he just talked about today yeah whatever that movie just, was yeah <laughs> i don't know well here here's the thing those those films have very small budget and they do amazing things with the budget that they have king amazing. kong versus godzilla has huge budget 
lots of name characters like people would die to work on that film and uh i don't know here here's hoping i don't want to project but the trailer didn't do it for me so i'm hoping the movie actually does all right i can respect that so also we have word that boris karloff documentary the man behind the monster will release in october for the 90th anniversary of frankenstein i know dave you're a big fan of frankenstein what do you think about that that sounds pretty cool pretty cool Pretty cool. I'm into it. I'm into it. Yeah. So I mean, his uh, his daughter Sarah is pretty cool. I I hope she's there. I hope she's still alive. Wow, that really just took a morbid turn. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, she's I'm pretty sorry. cool. I hope she's still alive. What? <laughs> yeah, I hope she is too. Well, it's... she was old, like, a, like I don't know. She was in her seventies, I think. It's a weird like, thing to even mention, though, I was like, like out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> you could say well, that about anyone's family member. Like. <laughs> she was instrumental in keeping Boris Koloff stuff going. There yeah. was a uh, release That's footage the connection. of All him. Right. Yeah, there was released footage of him with green makeup holding his daughter. And that was a home video that apparently Sarah Koloff released. Um, and how did you get years, access to that? <laughs> she released it to somebody and then it ended up on YouTube. Okay. Or something. So that's how that happened. Sure. But I was actually, I went to Monster Bash. And uh, that was where she brought it to the world. And that was really before, that was when MySpace was around. So that's how long ago that was. But um, I remember sitting in a room full of all these old school horror fans watching that. And they were like, oh my God, everybody was creaming their pants, dude. Because they had never seen it before. It was a big Um, old, big old cream So that's how that ties in. Monster Bash? Where was it located? Uh, Monster Bash was in Pennsylvania. Uh, oh, moved around, I was but it was sure it wasn't Jersey because I know yeah. no, you can't you can't go back to Jersey anymore. Yeah, I'm. I'm why why you got to bring that up all the time, dude? <laughs> I mean, I, I probably could now. They they wouldn't recognize me after like 25 years, right? Yeah, they we'll wouldn't see. recognize you. Um, yeah, you know, I think um, Frankenstein. Like when I was younger, I didn't like Frankenstein as much as I did when I got older. Just like thinking about the, the Universal monsters in general. Like he's, he's one of the characters that as I've gotten older and I have like watched the film as an older person, like I got a new appreciation for the film and how like he's a more like sympathetic character. So I do, I do love that character. I know Josh, you're a big um, creature from the Black Lagoon fan, right? And um, yeah, he's another one that like, you know, watching the film and kind of thinking about the themes of the film now, like I have like a, a different outlook on it than I did as like you know, when I was younger watching those films and you just see it for more like just as them being monsters. But now like you see it as more like, you know, they're like the creature from the Black Lagoon is kind of like a, a lonely character, kind of ostracized and, you know, taking his bride and whatever. So I think it's interesting to like go back to these films as an adult and like, you know, try to think about these themes and like what what they mean, how like they look feel different now when we watch them. I don't know. Brandon, are you into any of the Universal monsters? Like, what was your favorite? Uh, I would have to go with Wolfman. Ah, I do like Wolfman too. Yeah. Yeah. Little Lon Chaney Jr. Yeah, uh, yeah, that was that was good. You know, you know what's funny uh, when you get on the uh, talk of Universal monsters, I find it fascinating that like uh, most of the Universal monsters, like Boris Koloff, uh, Lon Chaney Jr., it, almost all of them were in multiple films. Yeah, except mm-hmm. both guys that were in the Creature from the Black Lagoon. Oh, so yeah. that's yep, I always right. found that ironic. Yeah, Ben Chapman was never in another film. He played well, kind the creature. Of, didn't it kind of feel like so the creature from the, the creature from the Black Lagoon? Like, kind of was like almost like almost kind of like the Invisible Man. It was like almost like a separate entity than the other ones that did like crossover films. Like yeah. you know, there was yeah, Man yeah, meets I Frankenstein, right. Dracula, the House of Frankenstein. Dracula was in right. So it's almost like those two films were like separate entities of their own. But I do love the fact that Clint Eastwood. Like, didn't he start, what was it, uh, Creature from the Black, the third Creature from the Black Lagoon? The Creature Walks? Or Walks Among Us or something? Uh, Well, he was that. he was in films before that, I'm pretty sure. Was he? I can't even well, think I know of it was that. one of his earlier films. He plays a scientist in it. And um, it's just cool that, seeing him as that. A, young, a young dude. As a young dude? <laughs> yeah. As a young punk, the old crony he is now. As, as a young little punk. Uh, well, Boris Koloff, he was in, uh, geez, like... 200 films or something uh mostly all horror so i'm i'm guessing that's going to be a pretty interesting documentary so that's pretty cool news brandon yeah brandon, be thank cool. you for sharing this news with us oh, no problem man no problem so uh that wraps up horror news for this week uh, let's get into uh sunday night streams 
the Sunday night streams. Josh, let's go. Let's see what you got here. What do you what you got? Ooh, speaking of old school movies, I did the Haunted Palace. Uh, so it's an Edgar Allan Poe story starring Vincent Price. It's an Edgar Allan Poe story. Did and it also have Roger Corman directed, in it? Shut up. It was directed and produced by Roger Corman, you asshole. Yeah, there. I spit it all out one one take. <laughs> Best movie ever. I absolutely love Vincent Price when he does Edgar Allan Poe work. The story was great. The acting was great. Vincent Price plays two characters. He plays Charles, and then he goes back to the old wizard that I can't think of what his name was. Merlin. And his acting was so perfect. That's it, King Arthur style. Uh, but his acting, you know, he, he's such a great actor. Hit it spot on. And then he was reading Poe at the end. And uh, so, so awesome. And I, it's like the best thing to do on a Sunday is sit down and watch like Edgar, like the three kings all in one spot. You got Edgar Allan Poe, Vincent Price, and Roger Corman all in one project. It, it's just awesome. So, and Lon Cheney was... Jr. was in it. He was played he? the henchmen. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta be Which kidding is me, funny man. because he's a really big dude. So him standing next to Vincent Price makes Vincent Price look small. So yeah. it was it was really, really interesting to see them on screen together. That was a really cool movie. I take you guys didn't see it. No, I never I never caught that. I'm not against it. I like it. Sounds like a good pick. Nice. Yeah, it only right. took me five tries to get it out, but uh highly recommended. So okay. <laughs> All right, cool. So my choice for Sunday Night Streams, I was rolling with Chud 2, Bud the Chud. Josh, I had seen that you uh, you enjoyed that pick. You hit me up and you was like, oh, Brandon, I didn't think you would like that. And uh, yeah, I was uh, actually watching Tubi the other day. So there's this thing that I do. It's like, I'll like watch a movie on Tubi and then I'll just keep my TV on all day. And then it just keeps going and it keeps playing all random movies. Right away, I seen Chud 2 and I was like, oh, man, I haven't seen this film in years. And like you said, Josh, that film is definitely hokey. It's like a little fun film. And it also it reminds me of watching horror films back in the day on TV, like on Saturday or Sunday when it would just air on TV. They would play those little hokey films like uh, Return of the Living Dead and everything like that. All the films that have like comedy driven horror built into it. Yeah, it's, it's a fun film. Like I had been saying for a while, I hadn't seen this. This was a while back and I finally had gotten around to it and I was like, this has nothing to do with the first Chud. No. Nothing. It is like, it, and I was like, I was a little disappointed. Um, so I actually, I want to go back and watch it again because I think I was so excited to see a continuation of the first Chud that I was mm-hmm. like, I was like kind of let down, but not that it was like, I, di- I didn't enjoy this or anything. It was just, I was like really hoping to get a continuation of that. And this, yeah. this was like out there. But I cool feel theme song though. Yeah. I like, we're at that age now where, like I know back in the day we would always get upset like everybody would get upset about Halloween 3 and a few other films you know that just films that had a sequel that kind of like did nothing with the previous films and we kind of get all pissed but like now like you you go into these films with an open mind and you're just like all right you find that you can appreciate these films yeah so I enjoy it the judge the uh (laughs) in case you guys didn't know this was actually supposed to be uh, the sequel to Return of the Living Dead. And then last minute, they changed it to Chud 2 instead of Return of the Living Dead 2. What a what a weird thing. Look at Josh coming yeah. through with the horror facts. Yeah. Yeah. I, I got this on yeah. DHS. Too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fucking right, I bitch. know everything yeah. except Roger Corman. You guys ever okay. seen Butt of the Chud? <laughs> Butt of the Chud. Butt of the Chud. <laughs> I thought you were busting my balls right there. I'm like, why is he busting my balls? Like, that's what they were going to call the sequel, but then, yeah, <laughs> last minute, but of the chud. I don't want to. I don't even want to think about that. I get a gross mental image. Oh, shit. That's the adult version. <laughs> yeah. All right, my guys. Good job. Excellent Sunday night stream picks. I love them. All right, so uh, we are going to move on to. Slept on Saturdays. I'm going to start it off with my first pick. So I picked Amityville Horror 2, The Possession. Uh, That one stars Burt Young, Jack Magner, and Diane Franklin. This one I hadn't seen. So I I watched it like about a month ago. And at the recommendation of uh, 
our follower, Phantasm 420. And it's a messed up film. And as soon as I watched this, I was like, what took me so long to watch this movie? I absolutely loved it. There's like incest in it and like possession. And it's just it's just out there. Oh, there's like domestic abuse. It's just it's got everything, <laughs> everything that like you don't really want to see. But like, it's like, wow, they went for it. So it's like kind of like shocking, I guess, in a little bit. But like, I don't know, it was it was a good film. Uh, I thought the acting in this movie made it though like because if they were if it was terrible acting i don't think they would have pulled it off the dad is like a super recognizable guy it's burt young recognized him from a thousand things and i can't think of one of them at the moment but definitely a super recognizable face diane franklin who uh we've recently reached out to uh to see if she'll join us on the show she was also in terror vision uh, she does a great job as the sister uh super likable character and the, and then the brother, who is like the main possessed guy, I think that's Jack Magner. He um he does a great job as like a super weird, awkward teen that's kind of like that ends up getting possessed and turns into an a an a a hole. So um yeah, definitely check this out. I know Josh, you just watched it the other day after I posted it, right? Yeah. So I watched this a long, 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 long time ago, and I then I watched it again just after you posted it. I was like, oh man, I I didn't remember much of it. It's one of those movies where more crazy shit happens in the first like half hour. I think they did that on purpose. It was like reversed. So every like ghost or possession story is slow all the way until the last like half hour, 20 minutes. Yeah. And in this movie, it's opposite. The first like 20 minutes, you're like, what the hell is going on? There was no character mm-hmm. development, no nothing, just pure insanity. <laughs> yeah. And then they went into the characters. And yeah, I forget the guy's name who played the the boy. I can't think of it offhand, but him and um, Diane Franklin were absolutely amazing in that film. And he deserves so much more credit than he got for that film. But I can't think of his name right now. Such a good film. It's highly overlooked too, Dave. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've been putting this movie off for a while because I've been trying to like binge all the Amityville movies. And I had skipped over this one because it wasn't streaming for a little while. And it just recently returned. And um, boy, am I glad I went back to it because part three was trash compared to this one um <laughs> was that the 3d yeah oh i love that one so i mean it, yeah but like compared to this one it, it like it, yeah it's nothing compared to this but yeah. um i mean it was all right it was an all right film but yeah this one is definitely a must watch i would say yeah i remember just watching like bits and pieces of this film like back in the day so like josh said like i can't remember much from it so i'm gonna have to go back and run it back and be like try to piece it together like see how what i thought about it and i'll yeah. let you guys know yeah, I think you. I think it's a film you would you'll like. It just I don't know. It's something about it. I just I just I had a feeling after I watched it, I was like, I know you guys would enjoy this one just as much as I did. Yeah, it's like when it comes to that franchise, you know, I just remember the first one. Yep, that's all I got. All right, all right. So my choice for uh, slept on Saturday, I'm gonna roll with the 2001 film Joyride. If you're a big fan of Paul Walker, I'm pretty sure you've probably seen this film. Back in the day, a Matt trucker that's just not the person to fuck with, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's a good way to put it. <laughs> yeah, and so all you remember, all I remember, because I watched this film like when it first came out, when I was sitting there looking back for a film to choose for, uh, for Slept On, I was sitting there like, damn. I was just like, wait a minute, Joyride. That's a good film. You were really into it because of Paul Walker's butt cheeks, right? <laughs> no, no. Actually, I don't even remember that part, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Thank Everyone remembers that though, part. Dave. Dave's Everyone still got it paused if you want to see. <laughs> <laughs> it was all that, always that time when he would just hit up on the radio, hey, candy cane. <laughs> like, what the fuck? And that was a throwback, just, man. That was a throwback yeah, for me. Yeah. I, um... So I saw that my freshman year at URI, they yep. they brought us all into the auditorium and played this film. And that was like pretty wild time. Everybody was like, you know, people were smoking weed in the in the stand in the seats and stuff like that. Yeah. We all went drunk and stuff. It was it was a good time. So I had like a pretty fond memory of this film. But I like I literally have I know it's been on TV recently, but I haven't actually like sat down and watched it since, you know, yeah. like a year since it came out. So that's definitely a good pick, though. Definitely um, reminds me of like a certain era of movies. So mm-hmm. yeah, it was funny because uh, one of our followers had hit us up and he was just like, man, I love this movie. And I was just like, oh, man, did you ever see the sequels? And so he was like, no, what do you think? And I was just like, kind of fall into that, that 
wrong turn franchise like the first one's like really serious the rest of them are just like all right we're just gonna just fucking put this movie together and just kind of like you know roll with it and so like i told them they're like they're good but they're not you know i mean just don't go into it thinking that like it's gonna be like the first one you know so if just keep that open mind it's just gonna be like a little cheesy film check them out i recommend all three all right good to know i don't i'm trying to think if i've seen the other ones i think i saw part two maybe yeah, um, but I, ha- I don't think I've seen anything after that. So I'll have to check those out. I'm going to start stealing your warning. Don't go into this film thinking it's good. <laughs> like, hey, well, that's I like that. Well, I think that's how uh, so bad it's good to start. Oh, yeah. See, <laughs> don't go into this thinking it's good. It's, it's so bad. Sad. It's good. So well, this this one, uh, this one's really good, Brandon. This one is Monster Man from 2003. It starts off with a, you know, you got a, a nerdy guy and then like an asshole best friends driving. And, uh, you know, the asshole obviously picks on the nerdy guy the whole way. Then they meet this smoking hot girl on the side of the road. And uh, of course, she falls in love with the nerdy guy. And you're like, what is going on here? But the whole time there's this monster truck that comes up and, and leaves and comes up and leaves. And they they think that this monster truck is stalking them. And so it starts out like that. And you're like, oh man, this is going to, what is this a monster truck in the desert? But then it just totally goes off the fucking rails. All of a sudden the girl is like seducing him. And then the monster truck, it just starts killing people driving over them. The guy is all messed up. He gets out of the truck, starts chasing them. Madcap mayhem ensues. You find out the girl is a witch and she they kidnap the, the guys and like it, it's insane it, it's almost like texas chainsaw massacre style with the family one guy he got run over by the truck and he was all messed up so she put him back together and that's the monster man who drives the truck and then there's the sister who is sleeping with the brother who is cut in half and there's only the top half of him and he's like i want to have sex with my sister again so she's like i'll put you back together baby and then these two guys break into the house and try to free themselves and hey, kill Josh, everybody. And it's Josh, absolutely insane. You know those trailers that like show the entire film? <laughs> you're, you're being that right now. Oh, yeah. Uh, the one from the 80s. Maybe I should edit but that down. They thought it was over. But hold on. <laughs> I'm not finished. That at the I'm going to keep going and ruin this film for you. <laughs> You don't even have to watch it. Uh, and, and then and then his sister is there and she's pretty cool, but I hope she's alive still. <laughs> <laughs> do I have to do this over? No, no you're dying. this is staying here. <laughs> <laughs> you are done. Yeah, I take it you guys didn't see it. Wait, what no, movie? But when, <laughs> <laughs> but when you sent me the picture that so, said, hey, can you throw this in a template for me? And I'm sitting there looking at it. I'm like, this fucking kill looks like that guy from Mad Max. <laughs> like, what oh, the fuck is this? The monster truck is right out of Mad Max. When they built it, I researched this film uh, way back in a day. And that monster truck only <laughs> went 30 miles an hour. Why and it was made it? of sheet metal on a frame. Like it was, it was awesome. The, the the driver could barely fit in it. So yeah, Josh, this. Why did you what? research this movie? Because when it came out, this was like one of my favorite films when it came out in the early two thousands. There were some really good low budget films that came out, and I was like, oh, I gotta know everything about this. So I went out and looked it all up. Dude, you're like so I Rain found Man interviews of, and Rain Man of terrible of films. Stuff. Rain Man. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I don't know what Rain Man sounds like, but uh, I'll go with it. Dustin Hoffman. So, all right. <laughs> anyway, all right. That's he wasn't gonna bring in us, this, huh? He wasn't in Monster Man. That's for sure. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> that's that's accurate. All right, that's gonna bring us to. Um, oh, I'm sorry, Josh. Are you done? Well, wait a minute. How come you got two bears and scares, and I only got I don't, one? So bad I don't. Good? I don't. Josh. <laughs> you get two. How do you get two and I get one? No. Let me take my <laughs> I want to talk about my blurry finger. Nah. All right. Going on to bears and scares. All right. So the thing that Josh thinks is two is because it's two things in one. So it's a movie and a beer, Josh. I do this every fucking time. Um, <laughs> so it's <laughs> the movie I picked was the uh Shutter original uh Dead Shack from 2018, and then I was enjoying my uh Zombie Dust by Three Floyds Brewery in Munster, Indiana, which is an American Pale Ale, 
6.2% alcohol, pretty decent beer, like a West Coast IPA, if you like that. A little bit different to change it up because I'm always drinking these New England IPAs. So if you're a beer drinker, you know the difference. And um, it's good to mix it up once in a while. Uh, definitely a solid beer. And we don't get Three Floyds Brewery around here. So I had to go travel outside of the state in order to get it. And I was pretty glad to find that one. Dead Shack. It's like a horror comedy. A dad, his girlfriend, his son and daughter. And then they bring a, a friend of the son. They go into the shack in the woods for a little getaway. And while there, there's another shack in the woods. And there's zombies in that shack. And just, you know, horror comedy with zombies. I'm not going to tell the whole plot like Josh. But I actually <laughs> found this movie to be super funny. It's got, I, I can't remember the dad's name and I wish I could because he's he's actually really funny. He reminds me of like a poor man's Vince Vaughn. And I don't mean that as an insult. It's like when Vince Vaughn was funny. And I I really like loved Ouch. his character. Yeah, I know, a little shade. But <laughs> I really loved his character. And I thought that I hadn't heard anybody talk about this. Have you either of you guys watched this? No, I have not seen it. No, and like I, I only even stumbled on it because I was looking to see... I wanted to see what zombie films were on Shutter, um, mm-hmm. and then I watched. I saw this, watched the preview, and I was like, "Oh, it looks all right." Um, I I really enjoyed it. I actually would say, Brandon, check this out. Yeah, so that's my that's my bears and scares. Dead Shack, in 2018 on Shutter. Zombie Dust, Three Floyds Brewing. Drink it up. That's all I got. Sweet. Right? So that brings Monster me to Monday. Monday. Sorry, I just talked right over you. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna do your intro because you were taking too long. Again. Monster Don't Monday. Do that. Don't do that. No, no, I was talking. Do it now. Monster Monday! <laughs> Come on, it's too many times. <laughs> I'm just going to have you do it over and over and over. I can't. So, Done. Monster Monday, I picked Sputnik. Sputnik was a Russian film. Uh, it was actually the number one film in Russia. Of uh, all time. I don't... Yeah, because it's Russian, right? So, Sputnik obviously was space related. These guys go in space. They crash back on Earth. One, one guy is sucked in this alien and the alien comes out of him and eats penile glands, which we have talked about in the 2020 best of podcast. Yeah. So I remember really the penile glands. This yeah. This, this film was amazing. The alien was amazing. The gore was amazing. Uh, it's all in Russian. So it does have subtitles unless you speak Russian. I, number one in the mother country. I but, heard that it was actually number one of all time in all countries of Russian movies involving penal glands. <laughs> That's absolutely correct, uh, Dave. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so if you really you, want the you. full rundown, you should listen to our 2020 episode uh, so, of so our podcast. Rather than you tell them in three minutes, they should go listen to an hour and a half podcast episode to hear it in yes. there. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. Just make it sure. <laughs> Awesome. As soon as you turn this episode off, go listen. <laughs> awesome. He's, exa- he's exactly right, everyone. All right, cool, Josh. Thank you for your Monster Monday pick. Next, we're going to cover a follower pick of the week. So the one that I wanted to talk about today was, so this was a, a first time occurrence where we had a three-way tie. So the question was, what is your favorite Scream sequel? And obviously there's part two, there's part three, there's part four. So you don't have a ton to choose from. But we actually had a tie between all three of those entries, which I thought was pretty wild. And I want to open that up to you guys. Like, do you guys have a favorite Scream sequel? I personally don't. I would say that I'm going to be honest with you. I haven't seen the sequels in ages. Mm -hmm. I saw them all, like, I remember going to the movie theater, I think for each one of them. And I I think I pretty much liked them all. But yeah, I know, Brandon, I probably would open this up to you the most because you're the biggest Scream fan here. But even Josh, you might have seen some of these. I don't know. So let's see. For me, it would have to go in the order of two, four, then three. Okay. I'm really not a big fan of three. And that's... Now, uh, can you you tell me why four... I, I feel like part four... I've heard a ton of people talking like, oh, I know it's not a popular pick, but my favorite's part four or part four is really underrated. Was part four really disliked when it first came out? Is that why people keep saying that? Because I don't remember that feedback, but maybe that was the the thing for me for part four. I did not see part four like when it came out. I I seen it like later on as it was uh, released on video. I thought it was kind of cool because it was just like, you know, a new young crowd, like with the reveal of the killer being like Sydney's cousin. I just I just thought it was it was different. It wasn't playing that same game as 
the second one and a third one. It was just like, all right, we're just going to make new rules and just go a completely different way. And so I could, I respected that. And so like if I would have watched part four at the movie theaters or right away, like being so anticipated to see it, I don't think I would feel the same way because okay. I was just like, ah, it's another scream. Really, really don't care, but gave it time. And it was like a surprise. You know what I mean? Like sometimes like some films can just surprise you and you're just like, oh, oh shit. Or oh, that wasn't that bad. So that's the way I feel about part four. Cool. Uh, Josh, do you have uh, an opinion on this? Yeah, my favorite Scream sequel was I Still Know What You Did Last Summer. Oh, Josh with oh. the sick burns. <laughs> oh. Oh. Roasted that was good, right? Scream fans. <laughs> it took me the whole time Brandon was talking to think of that one. Yeah. Ooh, say something witty. Say something witty. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a, I'm not a, I, I like the first Scream. And then uh, after that, they, they, and they just dropped off for me, so I'm not a fan of the sequels. But you know what? I didn't. I, unlike Brandon, I didn't take the time to go back and watch them separately and stuff. So I probably should. You know, I guess. Um, yeah, just didn't. That's one of the staples of films I guess, that I yeah. just didn't really get into. So Emma Emma Roberts was in part four, right? Yeah, it was her cousin. All right, that's my favorite. Wasn't just the Noxzema girl in one of them? It was just, just because Emma Roberts was in yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right so that was our follower pick of the week like hey, i said it wait, was a three-way what, tie what about the noxima girl was she in the scream sequels what was her name uh no, Rebecca she, no she was in urban legend remember uh obviously not those those 90 teen slashers all blend together for me they were all kind of because you were never a 90s teen you were like 45 no, back then <laughs> i'm still 45 if anybody asks. <laughs> You've been 45 since since the 90s, so that's that's what I say when I go to the high schools. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was that joke. Come on, man. That was, did you that just was burn yourself? A, what the fuck? Happened? I'm not even sure where you were going with that. <laughs> <laughs> that was a terrible joke. We'll edit that out. <laughs> no, I'm keeping no, it. No, that's keeping that staying, dude. <laughs> All right. So we had so I just want to highlight how how crazy it was that we had that three-way tie. Because I mean, that was kind of unprecedented. We haven't had a three-way tie uh before. So I thought that was pretty cool. So shout out to everybody who um, casts their votes each week, who offers their um, their write ups. You know, I got I'm looking I'm just looking at that post right now. I got Sean Donnelly, um, who we know from he's from Rhode Island. Uh, Susie Marie 13, the Horror Den, the Elm Street Warrior, Phantasm 420, Carrie J00, Talkative Amber and Desert Bear 3451. Shout out to all of them for participating. And um, yeah, you guys are awesome. And I am going to apologize on air for not doing a follower pick this week. I know it was a disappointment to some people, but uh, I do them every Wednesday. And I thought it was Tuesday when it was actually Wednesday. So I didn't do it. So my bad, everyone. And we'll be back next week with that. You should have just done it a day late, Dave. No, I Josh, I refuse to do that. I refuse. Oh, how we many times have I missed schedule? Post? And then I put Monster Monday on Tuesday. Yay! Yeah. I do that, that all the time. I can but see, unlike you, on, I can I'm just admit jokes. my faults. What? Unlike you, I can just admit my faults. No, I can't do that. I can't make You're jokes. You're toxic, either. Josh. You're a fucking toxic person. <laughs> <laughs> You're so toxic. Oh, I'm not liking toxic your films Avenger. anymore. That was like, man, that felt harsh, dude. Josh is going to be in the fucking <laughs> remake of the Toxic Avenger. <laughs> <laughs> post your monster monday on tuesdays <laughs> killing people with books <laughs> ah, shit all right so follow up with the follower pick of the week i'm gonna get into uh like the killer cause play of the week give a shout out to mandy strange from that strange show she had like a cool Pennywise look on her page and went viral and so she submitted for our page we threw it up there and you know, just appreciate the love for everybody that submits everything for us. Yeah. So she had done one a few years back, and then did like an updated version of it. Oh, okay. And um, I or I think that's what was going on. But it, like her her cosplays are just freaking amazing. Like the makeup yeah. work she does, it's like yeah. We got to we got like to get her to do one. Josh. What? We got to have her do Josh. I'm Dress married. up as Josh or like paint Josh's face. <laughs> paint him. <laughs> like- where you going with that, Dave? With the big beard and the long hair yeah, and, and the rhinestone glasses. A, yeah, and then send them to the local library. Like right. a rhinestone cowboy. 
Oh yeah. <laughs> that guy. Is, that so shout guy. out to Mandy Strange. And also shout out to We Are All Mad Here. She had a cool horror cosplay from the week before from uh, Reanimator. She dressed up as Herbert West. So oh, yeah. thank you for taking the time and submitting that. Yeah, I just want, I want to also tell people, because I actually think she submitted that like a while ago. So if you guys want to, um, you know, be featured on our page, you guys have shit you want us to see, make sure to try to tag us on the pay, on the picture too. Um, sometimes just putting the hashtag PVD horror, uh, we don't frequently check that. But when people tag us in the photos, we do pay attention to that and yeah. try to, you know, show love when we can. So I just recommend if you guys want to be featured or you want us to see see your stuff, just uh, just give us a tag. Does that mean we could do uh, the Donnelly brothers? Dude, you can do whatever set of brothers you want to do. Um, <laughs> yes. You were well, just complaining you were married a second ago, and now you're like free range. Yeah, but the Donnelly brothers are different. <laughs> Kevin, different. Kevin did the fly, too. He submitted his artwork for the spooky sketch uh yeah. not too long ago so shout yeah. out to kevin donnelly man uh his prints are awesome oh weird it's like it's almost like we're we weren't going to talk about the spooky sketch but then like we're definitely going to get to that in a second so like chill are we really <laughs> i can't see the words i'm so sorry fuck josh <laughs> <laughs> what the you fuck? suck dude <laughs> hey you know what i didn't stalk a girl on the insta she posted this something like this like five years ago on MySpace. Oh shit. <laughs> uh Josh, they tag us. <laughs> they tag us. I don't know any, I don't even look at our social media. No, you're too busy to listen to other people's podcasts. Anyway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck out of here. We wanted to give a shout out to Hordad85 for the uh Friday the 13th cosplay. As you guys know. We post that on our social media every Friday. We do our F13 Friday. So if you guys have a Jason cosplay that you want to show off, please tag F13 Friday. We love when we see new ones, but we also treasure those guys that we feature pretty much every week. Um, We have some people that have been sharing with us for for a a long time now, like a couple of years, I would say, with some of them. But the Horror Daddy 85, this is our first time featuring you, so... Uh, Thanks for uh, sharing your work and, you know, thank you to everybody else that uses that tag. So that goes to the spooky sketch, which is on Sunday. Shout out to Slasher Camp 83 for submitting an awesome Friday the 13th drawing of Jason. What was it? Jerzen. That's the tattoo, man. Jerzen Bornies. Jerzen Bornies. Jerzen Bornies, the tattoo. That was pretty good artwork. I appreciate that. Good Jason. We should send him the uh, Jersey tattoo. A good Jason. <laughs> I appreciate a good Jason and a good set of Donnelly bros. <laughs> That's right. Kevin I'm Donnelly. If you're to me. I love your artwork. Right? <laughs> Fuck you guys. Fuck you. thirsty on this episode. Just sounds thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm making a post of the fucking Jason. You're not making any posts, dude. Don't even lie to the fans. Uh, Is there anything you're working on, Josh, before you want to go? You want to let the fans (laughs) (laughs) know? So anyways, yeah. So I guess that pretty much wraps up this episode. You know, thanks for, for bearing with us as always. You guys are the best. We would really, really appreciate any feedback you guys have throw it up in a review on itunes on all those other weird podcast streaming things that i've never heard of but josh brought to my attention the other day that actually exist josh what are some of those i don't even know uh well there's audible um well that was like us on audible you you can follow us on spotify and then that one's not weird either i said the weird ones yeah, Pod Chaser, you can leave a review for us. Um, yeah, there's Pod Chaser. Listen notes, you can like us there or follow us there. Pretty much, almost all of them, you can either follow us or leave a review. It helps. So there you go. Follow that us helps Pod a lot, Chaser. right? Pod, <laughs> Pod Chasers, Pod Beans, it's Stitcher, the Sean, Sean Dodley Brother Chasers. <laughs> And all those other all those other podcast streaming oh, sites yeah definitely uh leave us some feedback if you guys will listen to what josh said do that uh, basically <laughs> just leave us feedback give us a follow and um yeah 
Hope to hear from you guys on the social medias. So we'll see you guys there. Signing off. This is Dave. This is Joshua. And this is Brandon. Thanks for tuning in. Take it easy. Have a good night. I totally forgot every single podcast, please. That I was like, Josh, you like, literally uh, listed so many. Podchaser, Spotify, <laughs> Apple. It's all free. Get it on Sean Hey, Sean, you play can get PVDR. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, Sean, Sean and Kevin, play PVDR. <laughs> 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 Anything for you, Josh? Fuck you guys. I can spot Dude, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> Did you just teleport? You just, you, you, oh my god, Josh, it's worse. What is happening right now? On? I don't know. You tell me. I need to go back? What the fuck? Yeah, he's fucking freezing. All right, Brandon, I guess we're going to have to do this alone. This is Josh. <laughs> this is Josh. Uh, uh, no, Josh, stop. Uh, stop talking, dude. Wait, you're back, Josh? How'd you get in here? Well, it sounds is better this, right now, so... Is this your porn phone? Yes. This is my fans-only phone. Are you already no. sound better, Josh. Yeah. Yeah, I look better, too. Nah, that stayed the same, unfortunately. All right, let's uh, go. I'll have you know, I got on the scale, and I'm down to 243. Oh, weight-wise. I thought you meant you're like your, your face. <laughs>